Hey ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if you're here for the first time. It's great to have you along for the ride. Today we're going to take a little trip back to yesteryear. Oh, those far-flung days of 2013, or thereabouts, when we look at the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Deluxe Class Bumblebee. Now, I'm not a huge Bumblebee fan, but I will say this, that of all the iterations and incarnations that we've gotten of this guy, I honestly think that this one might be one of the absolute best. And that's pretty high praise coming from me. Stick around and I'll explain why in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. It's the cool thing to do, the right thing to do, the free thing to do, and the fun thing to do. Stick around, join our little crew here, and have your say. And this is Bumblebee. I, I, I've never been a huge fan of the character in any of his incarnations. I, I'm just not a huge Bumblebee guy. It's cool if you are because we all come into the fandom at different times and for different reasons. But I will say this, that this little guy is, well, he's basically a, a remold of the Transformers Prime uh, Robots in Disguise version that came out. And he looks a, a little more battle ready, so to speak. I like this version. I like this version for a bunch of reasons, and we're going to talk about all of them. And I was kind of surprised that I dug this guy as much as I do. So, I'm going to stop babbling. Let's get over to the table and take a closer look at this dude. And whoa, that is a whole sea of bee. And yes, it's a veritable ocean of yellow and black for a character that has had incarnations everywhere he has gone. Um... What can I say? These aren't really mine. As I said, I'm not a huge B fan. Most of these, except for, uh, I believe, one, belong to one of the Scraplets. He is a big B fan, so this is kind of what we got. And there are a few others kicking around, but hey, you get the idea. Uh, I looked at this little figurine, uh, which is mine, actually, way back, I think in episode 49, if I'm not mistaken. Um, then we have this movie version uh, that's been looked at time and again and released time and again. I believe something like 21 times. I looked at that in episode 282. Next we have um, a KO of the animated Bumblebee. I looked at him in full in episode 220, that being this little guy. It's actually a pretty good KO. Beyond that, we have, um, what? The Generations 1, the Little Legends Generations 1 here. I looked at that in episode 114 a long time ago. I, I actually really like that uh, version of B. I thought it worked quite well. Then we have a uh, Legends class. Uh, version of Bumblebee uh, from Transformers Prime, that being this little dude out front. I looked at him in episode 316, uh, and this is a pretty good one as well. Next up, we have the Generations Deluxe. Uh, it's really the War for Cybertron version. It came in a box set uh, known as Rage Over Cybertron. I looked at the entire box set that I, I really scored for a steal of a deal in episode 236. Of course, we have the Titans Return, my customized Titans Return B that I looked at in episode uh, 257. Uh, this is really my version of B, at least for now. And of course, we cannot, cannot uh, pass over the masterpiece MP08B with Spike. I looked at in episode 273. So taking all of them out of it, and then there was one, and that's the one we're going to focus on today, and I think probably one of the best ones, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, he actually comes with a lot of accessories. Um, admittedly, several of them have become lost to time, but I'll, I'll kind of cover things 
uh, the absolute best that I can for you here. So we're going to look at those first and then we'll kind of look at this guy with all of those accessories or at least versions of them attached to him. Now before I go on though, I should note that this mold was used a few times. We have another version that we're going to look at. <coughs> As part of the Predacons Rising uh, subline, he came out as Nova Blast Bumblebee and had some blue on him. Actually, a fair amount of blue on the forearms and the legs um, and with his accessories. But, it, it, you know, it looked cool. And I feel like there may even have been one other uh, incarnation of him with this mold. But that kind of eludes me right now. So... Taking him out of it, we'll look at his accessories next. First up, we have two of these nicely molded blasters. There's a peg on the bottom. There's a hole on the top. Uh, these can go on his arms in robot mode. Or if you have both of them, they can actually go pegged together one on top of the other. Uh, and that works in his vehicle mode. Uh, it looks kind of cool, like a four-barrel blaster. These are uh, just cast in gray, although it looks almost shiny and silvery here, I think, on camera. But they're just cast in gray. Then we have two of these pieces. Uh, there's a peg on them right there. Uh, and there is a location for these. Really, I think they're just meant to store missiles. Now, he came with uh, six black missiles, uh, they, they've gotten lost over time, but they're the same as this one, and they just, you know, peg in there like that, and peg in there like that. By rights, like I said, these should be black, um, but you get the idea. Uh, these came with a different version that we'll look at another time. These should be black. And he comes with this thing. Um, it's a projectile launcher. I guess it's supposed to be like a crossbow type of deal. There are two spots up here where you can store black missiles, and that's what he's supposed to come with. And like I said, those are missing. These are bluish ones that come with another version. We'll look at that another time. But you put it in there, and there's a black button back here that fires it, and it is rather strong. So uh, I'm gonna take all of these accessories because there are many of them. I'll put them on B in his robot mode and we'll see him kind of, you know, all decked out with all of his paraphernalia. And here we have B completely decked out. Now, I, again, I'm gonna note, I know I've already said it, but the bluish missiles should all be black. So the two on this side should be black, the two over on his other door should be black and the two on his back should be black. In terms of how everything fits in, there are spaces on his arms that you can mount the blasters. Uh, there are, it's probably easiest to show this from the back, there are holes in the door wings uh, that you can put the missile pod holders on and the launcher goes in a, you know, a rectangle or a rounded slot right there via a five millimeter peg. And he looks good. I think it's so cool that this guy came with so many accessories and could carry all of them. I, I, that really does impress me, even to this day. It's not something that you see, you know, that you see very often anymore. Uh, now, is it ideal, you know, accessory storage? No, it's not. But considering this guy is supposed to be an armed up beast hunter, I think that it's kind of passable. Let's look more closely now at his uh, paint apps and start giving this guy some grades. So I've removed all of his accessories and we can kind of look at this guy bare bones in terms of his paint apps. He's, he's pretty close to the animation. I mean, you're not mistaking it. The, the head sculpt is more stylized with a larger kind of head crest here. Um, obviously he doesn't have in the animation the like black spiky pieces on his shoulders or on his ankles, but he does have the, the yellow legs with the black kneecap. Uh, he has the yellow shoulders and the yellow forearms with the black hands. And the chest is fairly accurate. The wings are kind of up a bit higher and 
I'm not a huge fan of this piece just sticking up behind his head, but it is what it is. Overall, you're still not going to mistake that this is B. Now, that being said, the actual B is a kind of a solid yellow. This guy, you can especially see here like on this door, has that marbling texture. You can see on the roof here that marbling texture. I like that because it makes every figure unique. Um, as such, I'm going to say that for what he is, it's, it's about an 8. Now, the earlier uh, use of this mold before we had the remolded bits put on was probably about a 9.25, 9.5. It was pretty darn accurate. Um, but there's no mistaking, it's, it's Bumblebee. You know, it is. Um, so, good score to begin things. What about his articulation? Well, in vehicle mode, he rolls just fine. What about in this mode? Well, we have a head that can go left and right. It doesn't really look up or down. Uh, the door wings, they can move. I have them sort of hunched over a bit there. Uh, the arms can go out to the side about, about that far. Uh, that could probably be a little bit better. Uh, the shoulder can go all the way around. We have bicep swivel, we have an elbow to 90 degrees, nothing at the wrist. Um, it would have been nice to have something at the waist. We don't have that either. We do have a thigh swivel and we have uh, legs that can do full splits uh, all the way forward. If you get the backpack sort of out of the way, they can go all the way back. We have a knee to 90 degrees, no issues there. Uh, and a foot that can tilt forward and back, not side to side. So that would have been nice. Overall, he kind of has everything that you would want a deluxe class figure to have, plus he stands well. I'm going to say that that's a success. A waist joint would have been nice. Ankle tilt would have been nice, but it's still pretty solid. I'm going to give it an 8.25. Uh, yeah, 8.25. So, Honestly, you average everything out, and this guy is just a little over an 8. It's pretty good. What about the transformation? That's kind of where I think this guy really shines and is sort of brilliant. Um, there are certain things you do yourself, but then there are certain things that get done for you, and I dig that. So let's get into the transformation for this guy. Now, full disclaimer, I shot this once and in my excitement it went out of focus and I didn't even notice at the time. So we're gonna try this again. Hope that it fares a little better because I do honestly think that the transformation is fantastic. Um, so, the bottom of the body is pretty simple. We just need to really fold the, the ankle up over the shin and the foot will kind of go up on the the thigh, so to speak. We put these two pieces together and we lift off the kind of backpack section for now. Pretty straightforward. We straighten out the arms if that wasn't already done. And now comes what I think is the absolute brilliant part of this conversion method. There's an automorph here that I think is done right. It's the way automorph always should be, where it moves fluid and smoothly. Now, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and show it. There's a piece here behind his head, and that piece will come down between these two grill sections, and it will automorph the arms, uh, or I guess the shoulder pieces, in to become the front tires. The head just, you know, should be straight, and it goes down into a slot basically. So we. Bring this forward and it comes down in there and we can even kind of press the arm pieces to, together a little bit here and everything goes together nicely. It's difficult to show because the fact of the matter is that it's all pretty just one fluid motion. All you need to do is kind of hold on underneath here and push that tab forward and then all of this great stuff happens with the chest moving to the side so this piece fits between the head going down underneath and the shoulders coming in. Next, you can angle the body back and when you do that you have this backpack that you want to deal with now. There are two little pegs up underneath that go into two kind of slots on the back of his legs. 
So we bring that down and we should be able to just peg that in nicely like that. It pegs in the front like that. We can even give the front grille and the shoulders a final squeeze. And this is kind of what we have now. Um, we're not quite done because of course we still have the doors out and the arms down. Next, close the doors in. Oop, I'm having trouble with this one over here for whatever reason. There we go. Uh, close the doors in. And last but not least, you're going to bring up the arms. Uh, make sure that the molded detail is out here. That's, that's the, I don't know, ground effects, running boards, whatever. You bring those up and in, and same on the other side, up and in, and in the end, there you go, you have Bumblebee in all of his glory, and I think it looks really, really cool. I, I, I love how this turned out, I really do. So we're going to kind of reposition things and get a better look at this guy in his vehicle mode. And here we have B ready to roll into action and hunt some beasts. We have the uh, kind of two arm blasters put together and pegged into a slot on the hood. This is the uh, launcher that I mentioned earlier. It's on his roof and of course the, the two missile pods I guess are on his doors. Now of course uh, we have the, the blue projectiles here they should be black but you get the idea I am sure of it he still rolls like a champion um, I, I, I dig it the transformation 10 it is smooth it is fun the automorph is one that actually works great overall I think that this B is a solid 9 and truth be told because it is remolded and somewhat inaccurate the original use of the mold that was definitely more based on the animation and released a couple of years earlier in the Robots in Disguise line, that's probably about a 9.75. It is an excellent B. If you overlooked it, and remember, I'm not a big fan of the character, but if you overlooked it, I think he's worth checking out again. Especially when this guy was obtained so cheap. I got the dude for five bucks a long time ago and he's definitely worth that especially with all of these accessories. When do you see that anymore? Anyway, this guy's ready in my opinion to roll into action. Come on B, let's go hunting. And here we are back again. Like I said, I really actually like this guy. I think that this is an example of the kind of spring-loaded, I guess, automorph gimmick working right. It makes the transformation a lot more smooth, a lot easier. I like the marbling effect of the paint color on him. Yes, okay, it's not exactly accurate, and the molding certainly isn't exactly how we saw him on the show because he never kind of got this look there. But I dig how it turned out. I don't think that you're going to mistake in any way, shape, or form that this is, in fact, Bumblebee. Ah, uh, sometimes new isn't always the way to go. If you're looking for kind of a solid interpretation of Bumblebee, especially if you're a fan of Transformers Prime, then, you know, obviously getting the Robots in Disguise version is probably the way to go, but you can probably score this guy for a little bit cheaper, and he might just fill the bill for you, especially with all of those great accessories. Anyway... That's about it for this guy. That's about it for me. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for giving me some of your valuable time. You know it is always appreciated. I'm again going to say hit that subscribe button. Stick with us. A lot of fun things coming up. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.